Okay, so you just sourced out a bunch of new music. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to prepare it for your DJ set. We're gonna be using a couple of pieces of software for this. One is called Mixed In Key, uh, which you do have to pay for. Not required, but I do recommend it. Recordbox is the other piece of software that we're gonna use, which is free for what we're gonna be using it for. And it also does have a version of Mixed In Key built into it. But let's dive into Mixed In Key so I can explain to you guys what that is and why it's important. Um, so if you look in here at my screen now, I basically have this set one folder with all this music that I just put together here that I purchased, right? Purchased all of this off of TrackSource. Uh, and you can see it's all labeled pretty normally here. And that's that. Now I have Mixed In Key open, which is uh, a really great software. Uh, there's this you know, it's called the Camelot wheel, right? It's this color wheel here with all these numbers and letters on it. Uh, this is a really cool piece of software. Basically, you dump your music in, which I'll do now as I explain it. I'm going to just highlight them all and drag them in here. And now it's going to start processing these. And it's going to analyze the song and it's going to figure out the key of the song. And it's going to label the key of the song to one of these letter number combinations. So basically, to touch on this really quickly, there's some basic rules that apply. Um, and this makes it so that you can mix in key perfectly uh, and make, like match two different keys uh, that will work together with, uh, you know, flawlessly making your mixes really, really smooth and pristine, which is really nice. Uh, which isn't, you don't have to do that also. You shouldn't live by this. Uh, don't be afraid to mix into a different key of a song and have them not line up as long as you can mix them smoothly then I don't think there's an issue there. But this makes your stuff sound really, really pro when you do start mixing in key. So basically, as you can see here, I have these songs all listed out here. There's a tempo and then there's this color bar here where it has the, the new key of the song. And as you can see in my folder here, it has relabeled the files now with the number letter combination uh, on the front of the track title, which you can designate where that lives. I like it there because it lines up nicely and I like to organize my stuff by key so that when I'm playing a song in a key and I wanna flip genres, I can say, let me see what I have in the key that might inspire me to play something. But the way it works, to just touch on that again, which I know I mentioned I was gonna do, is that uh, you can basically mix left or right or up and down. So let's say I have a song that's in the key of 12A, which is irrelevant whether it's C, D, A, it doesn't matter because now you kind of just go by this number letter combination, right? You don't have to know the keys of the songs. All you know is that this one's labeled 12A and you know that you can mix it perfectly with a 12B or you know you can mix it perfectly with a 1A or an 11A. So you, from the main root there, the 12A, you can either go backwards or forward, 11A or 1A, or you can go to the opposite letter of that same number B. That's the general rule. There's a couple other like combinations you can do, but that's a little more advanced. This is just the basic way to do it, which is fun because honestly, you're not going to get stuck mixing all in one 12. You're not going to mix all 12 A's in a row. You're going to jump around. You can go 12 A, 11 A, 10 A, 9 A, 8 A, 7 A, 8 A, 7 A. You know, you can go back and forth. So uh, it's really cool like that. And so for that reason, I highly recommend it. So that's mixed in key. Now I'm going to show you record box, record box with a K. This is the best, it's owned by Pioneer, so it goes really hand in hand with all the Pioneer CDJs and all the equipment that is out there. And basically what we're gonna do in this software is we're gonna add, like a, we're gonna line it up onto the grid or make sure that it's lined up on the grid. We're going to add a loop or a marker, some things like that, and we're gonna create a playlist or a subfolder so that we can locate this easier on the drive because I kind of have everything organized like that. And then we are going to get it ready to go onto the flash drive. So diving right into it, I'm gonna take all these songs that I just processed through Mixed In Key. I'm gonna throw them in here. I have a playlist called Sound Collective, uh, which is gonna be what I'm gonna use for this example today. So it looks like it didn't totally come in sequence here. Oh, it did come in sequence, so that worked out. Usually they come in the order that you drop them in, so you, can, you have to organize them again after, but now you can see we're lined up 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, all the fives and the sixes, everything's lined up nicely. So I would leave this folder like this pretty much before we put it on the drive, except I would go through each song and make sure that the grid, these little markings here, this, these red lines line up on the kicks, which it looks like they do. And if you need to make adjustments, you can go to this grid feature here 
and nudge this around or straight up slide it over to where you need it to go. Make sure it's lined up and then hit this red and white line to make that marking the first beat of that count. So you got to count and make sure that you're on the grid and the beat. The best way to do it is to always make sure that the first beat of the song is the one because sometimes it'll analyze the song incorrectly and it'll put the one on the second beat and that'll throw the whole grid off later. And this correlates to the quantize feature on the CDJs. So once you have put all these markings in and make sure that those are all lined up, I would add some loops. I would find a starting point to where like my bass comes in. And uh, from there, I would go back 16 beats and make an eight bar loop, which is just how I like to do it. So you might do this differently. That's okay. You can just do uh, like a, um, what's it called? Hotkey, right? Without the loop to just be your starting point, which you could do at the beginning of your song or a hot cue uh, is the term. I like to do the loop and have my loop be on the uh, hot cue so that when I hit it on the CDJ, it automatically plays that loop. So I like to mix in on loops and I'm, I find a good instrumental portion that has no tonality to it besides drums. And then from there, I can mix it into my next segment. So you go through all these. We will then get into the gear in the next lesson. So that's going to wrap this up for now. We're going to get this onto the uh, thumb drive in a little bit. We're going to talk about some gear overview and how to connect this uh, to your CDJs so that you can record your mix. I'll see you in the next lesson.